in the box. And if you didn't bring one today, you can get it to the office this week. That would be great. And um, we pray for our uh, leaders as they discern our budget for the next year in reflection upon the commitments that are shared. I'm going to open with prayer. Good and gracious God, we come before you today with the strains and stresses of our world, with fears and with grief, as we remember only a week ago the tragedy that occurred in, in worship. Lord, we pray this be a safe sanctuary for all people, and that those who would cause injure may be deterred from their efforts. Lord, we pray for those people who are grieving in Texas. And we lift up all our hearts to take this time to praise and worship you. Amen. I invite you to please stand in a brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls us into an everlasting hope, who guides us to springs of water of life, who enlightens us with the spirit of wisdom, one with the communion of saints. In all times and places, let us confess our sin against God and one another. I invite you for a moment of silent reflection. O oh God, our merciful Redeemer, we confess the ways we live only for ourselves. We fail to see you in our neighbor's face. We turn our ears from the voices that cry out. We pass by the hungry and the oppressed. In your great mercy, forgive our sin and strengthen us for service to all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sin. Blessed are you. Rejoice and be glad, beloved people of God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share this peace with one another.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. I believe there are some Kyrie inserts. We have a different one in the bulletin than what we'll be singing. So if you receive those when you walked in, we'll follow those. Lord be with you. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
A reading from Amos. Alas for those, alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them, and the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. reading from 1 Thessalonians. We do, not you to, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may gr- not grieve as others do, who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, though j- through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. 
Yet the wise took flasks of oil with their lamp. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out and meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will, be, there will not be enough for us, for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and I invite the kids to come forward for a kid's message. There we go. So, what is I? What do I have here? Flashlight. What What are they good for? Yeah, they they. I can make them go in the dark. Except this one's not working. You know why? Yeah. Gotta have two batteries. Yeah. So if I put this other one in here, then it should work for me. I can get it back on. Whoop, there we go. It's on. There we go. It's working. Yeah. Well, today's story from the gospel is about a group of 10 people who are waiting. Their bridesmaids are waiting for the bridegroom to come. So they're waiting for this uh, wedding party to come see them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's off and on. Yeah. Well, okay. So they are waiting for the bridegroom, and some of and they all fall asleep, and some of them have oil in their lamps. So the oil is like the batteries, and that's because they didn't have bat- they didn't have flashlights back then in our story. So they have oil in their lamps, and some of them took enough for the whole night, full batteries, and some of them only took like half the battery. And so they didn't have any light. So they had to go and leave. And while they left, this parade of light, all these people with their lamps, like the flashlights kind of glowing, and there's like this big long parade of light. They come, meet the bridesmaids, and they go off to have a party. And when the ones that forgot to bring enough batteries come back, enough oil in their lamp, they miss the party. And one of the things you can take from that story is sometimes we try really hard to do everything our own, be our own batteries, and to let our light shine in the world. But you know what? Um, we can use some help, and God can help us out with when we don't feel so bright and happy to help us feel a little brighter and happier. We don't always have to do it by ourselves. We can pray to God for some help and keep our light shining. All right. And you had a question. You had a question. What were your questions? No? It's a birthday today. Oh, yeah. Jesus. It's Jesus' birthday on Christmas. Yep. And lots of presents. Yep. And we're going to talk about that in just about a month. Isn't that crazy? That's going to be fun. Let's pray. Dear God, help us let our light shine. And so we can join others. 
and bring light to our world. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Yeah. You go see. So years ago, I was uh, helping my best friend. She was the maid of honor in her mom's wedding. And on the day of the wedding, we got this early morning phone call from the bride telling us that none of the groomsmen had their shirts for the wedding. So we needed to go to a Western store and buy five matching maroon western shirts in sizes large to 3XL by that afternoon. Furthermore, Grandma had slipped and fell on the freshly waxed floors at the grocery stores last night, so she was not going to be able to finish my friend's dress for the wedding. So my friend would also have to shop for a western shirt to wear with her jeans at the wedding. Well, thankfully, Billings, Montana has an overabundance of western stores. And so we were able, by 4 o'clock that afternoon, to have all the shirts bought, picked up the food, supplies, piled into my little Nissan Sentra, drove the one hour to the campground the wedding, where the wedding was to take place. The judge was there, the musicians were playing, the groomsmen were dressed, the bridesmaids were waiting, and it was time for the wedding, but there was no bride. Minutes went by, and then a half hour, and then it was an hour. And this was kind of before everyone was carrying a cell phone, not everyone had one, so we couldn't get a hold of the bride. And so we just had to trust that she would come. The judge became impatient, and we begged her to hang in there. Just, just another half hour, just, just five more minutes, you can do this. Just a little longer, believing the bride would come. And yes, an hour and a half later, the bride did show up, drove up calm and completely in control. The wedding went on immediately. And I mean immediately. She was there. We're getting married. We gathered in a circle around the wedding party. They exchanged vows. They were legally declared wed by the state of Montana. And feasting and celebrating began with no questions asked. <laughs> And whenever I hear the parable of the ten bridesmaids waiting for the bridegroom, I wonder, where's the bride? <laughs> I think about that hot August day in Montana when we waited for the bride to arrive. No one fell asleep that day, although I do believe our native flute player who had just won a Grammy Award probably played most of his catalog that afternoon. I wonder who are the people in this parable for us, the listeners? Are we the bridegroom? Are we the bridesmaids? Are we the oil and the lamps? Are we the absent bride? Why are five foolish and five wise? And why won't the wise bridesmaids share their oil with the foolish bridesmaids? Wouldn't have that been more in line with Jesus' Sermon on the Mount? This sermon in which we are to stand up for and help those who are abused and foolish and lost and hopeless by being God's service in hand. And why do they all fall asleep? Yet, 
by packing or not packing enough oil, they are called foolish or wise. They all fell asleep. Aren't they all foolish? And why is the door shut? To the five who were too little too late and told, I don't know you. And the door slammed shut. What about the message from Matthew 6? What's Matthew saying here? Because in Matthew 6, he says, Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. Right? For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who searches, finds. And everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. How does this parable connect with the three parables that are found in Matthew 25? This is the first of three parables found in this chapter. The last one ending with the message, if you did not do this for the least of these, you did not do them for me. Is this parable connected to the happenings that will occur in the next two chapters, 26 and 27, where Jesus asked his disciples to stay awake and be aware as he prays in the garden. And three times they fall asleep. Or with Peter, who three times says, I do not know him, I do not know you. Or with Joseph of Arimathea, who places Jesus' dead body in a new tomb, sealing the door with a stone, and the door was shut. So many questions. So much to consider about this little story. So here's what we do know. Just the facts, you could say. We do know everyone fell asleep. We know that the wise and the foolish, none of them could stay awake. Which is the point that Jesus is making, right? Stay awake. <coughs> so both failed. Just as the disciples will fall asleep as Jesus is praying in chapter 26, and he tells them to stay awake. Maybe the foolishness of the bridesmaids is that they left. They left to find more oil. What would have happened if they had stayed? What if they had waited for the presence of the bridegrooms, trusting in the bridegroom's mercy and grace to be upon them as they were waiting at the door to the banquet. Even if they had no oil to feed their lamps, no visible faith to burn, but were filled with the trust that the bridegroom would come and stayed present. Back in Montana, we trusted that the bride would come. We insisted that the judge stay a little longer, have some food, enjoy the world professional musician, ask us questions about our indigenous culture. Anything, just don't leave. She's coming, she's coming. And the bride arrived, and the wedding commenced. What if the bridesmaids trusted that the bridegroom would embrace all regardless of whether they walked in the light or walked in the darkness? As the psalmist sings about God, night and day are the same, and the night is as bright as the noonday sun. In fact, if you read the story, it's the wise bridesmaids who tell the foolish bridesmaids to go get some oil. And I think that is a very sneaky move. It reminds me of Mean Girls. 
mean girls who send the loser girls off on some errand so they miss the prom and then they either aren't allowed in or worse yet they get egged at the door in a straight up reading the kingdom of god looks a lot like everyday life we've been the foolish whose lamps of faith have run dry we've been the wise who feared sharing what we had and loved it too much to give away we've been the bridegroom who refused to let people in the point of this parable is that we have been all of these people the good the bad and the ugly and Jesus ends this parable by saying keep awake therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour don't run from the darkness and that includes time of transition they can be uncomfortable we can behave foolishly make mistakes wonder if the past affects the future and how get comfortable feeling uncomfortable get comfortable feeling uncomfortable and stay and wait and allow God to meet you where you are and welcome you into the party welcome you who have made mistakes and sit in the dark and if you are in that place where you feel that the door has been shut to you remember so was the tomb Easter changed things Easter changes us so let us be prepared for God's coming at all times in all places and with all people amen
Welcoming God's reign of righteousness and mercy, let us pray with people of every time and place. Awaken your church to be ready to respond when Christ meets us in the cries of those in need. We lift up the church's mission of care through world, Lutheran World Relief and other agencies. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for natural resources like oil, coal, trees, sun, water, and wind. Help us to use them wisely. Lord, in your mercy. Answer the cries of your people in nations caught in war and destruction. Hold in your care all veterans and their families. Ease the burden of tough memories and bring restoration and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. Shine your merciful and healing light on the despairing places of our minds and souls. Bring hope in the midst of danger, depression, and illness. We especially pray for Bonabel Luter, Don Kendall, Becky Smith, Lael Biella, Wayne Biggs, and John Van, Van Bibber. Lord, in your mercy. Bless those who prepare for marriage or who have been married in this place. Strengthen all bonds of friendship and relationship in our community. Give us joy in life together. Lord, in your mercy. Keep us alert for Christ's coming, sustained by the promise that we will be reunited with all the faithful who have died. Thank you for their lives of witness. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers and the hopes and concerns of our hearts, O God, as we entrust into your loving care all for whom we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. I invite you to be, be seated, and we'll have a time of sharing of our gifts. Praising my 
Creator God, you made everything. God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. We pray for the gifts of your spirit in our gathering within this meal, among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Jesus Christ, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. 
deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The meal is prepared, and all who believe they are receiving a meal of forgiveness are welcome to receive it. You will commune by intinction today, so you'll receive the bread, and then you may dip it in either the dark liquid, which is wine, or the light liquid, which is grape juice. So hang on to your bread when you receive it, and then dip. We have gluten-free elements available. Just ask the server for those. Also, you are invited to come forward uh, for this communion time to place your commitment cards in this box that's provided here. Thank you for prayerfully considering your financial commitment. We pray over each of these contributions to provide formative, positive, healthy conversations between leaders and the church as we move deeper into God's heart and mission together through our money, our time, and our talents. Come, let us eat.
invite you to please stand as you are able and receive the communion blessing. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Sovereign God, in this meal you give us a foretaste of the great feast to come. Keep us faithful to you, that we, with all your saints, may at length celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb, Jesus Christ our Lord. We dedicate our gifts to you, O God. We dedicate our pledges to you, O God. Use us, O God, to do your work in this world. We pray over these gifts blessing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated for announcements. Now turn your attention to the messenger, which uh, you would have received in your bulletin. Uh, some things coming up. There will be a breakfast immediately following worship as a thank you and fellowship time in this commitment sunday also also uh there's a thanksgiving uh pie social coming up november 22nd and as you note we need volunteers to bring pies set up clean up there'll be a sign up coming up shortly next weekend is a big weekend uh we will have a our congregational meeting and there will be a soup dinner that is sponsored by our youth at 11 a.m. and I believe Mike ha Michael has something to say about that too. Yeah. Hi, um, we, we have a lot of creative people in this congregation and they have bl blessed us with some gifts that they've made for the Christmas season and so there will also be some tables back here to celebrate Christmas a little early you can go shopping I'm telling you this so you can prepare ahead and get get your money ready and come and buy them all the money will go to the youth that are going to the youth gathering next year so come and celebrate both the youth and the creative people in this family we call Messiah Lutheran Church thank you Sure, do you want to? Um, also, we are having our congregational meeting following the late service next week. want everybody to stick around for that. It's an exciting time this year. There have been years when we just hope we have enough folks to fill a slate. Uh, we have four three-year openings this year. We have ten people on, this, on the ballot. That is amazing. I think that is just fantastic. So you've got to show up and vote. Um, but in order to be informed voters, uh, we are going to be having a meet and greet for uh, between services next week so that not everybody knows everybody. So please uh, stick around and the council doesn't know it, but they're bringing treats uh, for that. So anyway, thanks very much. This time I invite you to receive the benediction. You may stand as you're able. May the Lord walk beside you to comfort you. May the Lord walk above you to watch over you. 
May the Lord walk behind you to keep you safe. And may the Lord walk before you to show you the way. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we all to worship, make disciples. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thank you.